Isolation are my favourite things. So this is the painting we did in part one and it really is just an abstract so I'm looking at what I can try and make out of it. It could stay an abstract um, but I think I can see something in it so I'm going to see how I go bringing that out. Now I have a favourite product here which is shellac that you get at Bunnings. Um, you just mix it up with metho, it's dry flakes. Um, it's yummy stuff. If you see in there, it's just like amber liquid. Now, you have to be careful, you can't use your brush. Um, you have to use a, something that you can throw away because it will get ruined. Now, you can use this as a dribble, which I'll show you, or you can Use it as a glaze, which I'll just pour a little bit on there. It's just like honey, molasses really. And you can bring it over the top of your colours and it just gives a... Oh, this is probably not the best thing because it's giving a texture that I don't want. So I'm just going to get a bit of paper so I can smooth it out. That's better. Now if you see it's filling in the background with this nice honey, honey look glaze. It's a bit of a glaze here. Now you can paint over it if you don't like it, the idea of what it does in the end, but I quite like that it gives a rich look. I might even grab a little bit and put it onto this side because I can see a bit of a rock happening in here. I'm just going to grab a bit of that shellac and bring it through here just to deepen up that what could be a rock. Okay, it dries very quickly, so it will be dry very soon. Now, I'm looking here and I'm thinking I've got to try and get rid of some of the busyness in the sky. So once again, I'm going to use my favorite Chroma Krill Gesso Primer. And my favorite, well, maybe one of my wash brushes, which is a brush that is about that wide, an inch wide and flat again. I don't know why I like flat brushes, but anyway, I'm going to come in here and just separate some areas in here just to get rid of a little bit of busyness and still keep some interest in the sky. Um, bring a little bit of the blue that has for the sky. Get it in and back and forth nice and Loose. Come back over. So that's dry now already. So I can come in over that. I'm thinking I might just get rid of some of that there. And oh, not quite dry there. Leave that one. Um, coming down the bottom here, I might get a little bit of make this into some water down there. Okay, well that's still wet, I'm going to use my stick to just get a little bit of texture because I'm thinking these could be trees later. You can get rid of that if you don't decide not to do trees, but it's just a good opportunity to come through and you pick up the colour from the from the background.
texture. Always good to have interest, lots of lines to add interest and get the viewer looking to find out what is happening. Okay, now I said I liked pastels. I didn't use the pastels in the first part. So these are just dry pastels and I'm going to just use those to do a bit of embellishing. I'm looking for a darker colour, which I don't have here, so I'm just going to use these, these here to just add a little bit of embellishment. I'm not sure what they'll be, but maybe a tree trunk down there. There's a tree trunk here. And a few boulders amongst what could be boulders behind. So maybe this could be one big boulder and another one behind here. And I need lots of line. I also have some oil pastels which I just dropped in the sink. These are Sennelia, which are my favourite oil pastels. Uh, Sennelia are a in, um, French brand and they're like butter. So beautiful. Um, now with these pastels I will just add a little bit of a bit of colour. I'm thinking, okay, this is a bit of a nice tree colour. Can move that with your finger it's like oil so as long as you don't put the acrylic over the oil you're fine now I'm going to bring out a few trees so you can see what's happening here so I'll get my I might try my gesso because it does mix with the colors nicely and it can come over it with white later so here I've got one already started and I'm just going to twist twist Get it happening, don't not too straight. And maybe one other going up here. There's a whole crooked one. And maybe one here, make this one white. So I'm trying to find which I'm thinking might be hills. So I'm going to get my white, titanium white, and I'm going to come in just around a few of these colours. They could be the tops of trees, it could be anything. Look, okay, I'm just going to try and go in over these rocks. And blend it into the sky. See, it's starting to look like it could be a mountain range behind there, maybe. Over that shellac again, which is not good. use my brush because I don't want to ruin it so I'm just going to go over here with a bit of blue for the sky. It's just a piece of paper. A bit of gesso. That tree again. This one. is brilliant magenta into the sky up here. Remembering this is an abstract so it doesn't have to make sense which is what is the best fun. 
little gessoing there, get it moving. A little bit of movement could be storm, or could be whatever you want it to be. Bring a little bit of that pink over here just to balance it. Okay, still a little bit busy behind my mountain range. So I'm going to bring in a few opaque colours. Got a bit of red gold, Atelier. And maybe bring that rock out. Okay, not dark enough, so I'll add a bit of that other colour. Bit of the blue in with that to really darken it off. Now get your sticks and a little bit of texture. Look at that, the pattern that it makes. You can see the colours coming out from underneath. That just adds a bit of interest, detail. Okay, a bit of mustard. Strain Sienna. Okay, so I'll bring this in and I'm just going to highlight this part of that hill. It's like butter. Okay, my trees need to come out a bit, so I need to get a little bit of dark, maybe a bit of olive green for a few leaves. And they're just scribbles, they're not really, we don't try and make them leaves. A little bit abstract, I like that abstract look. It's actually raw umber. I thought I had olive green, but that's fine. It's a greeny, greeny look. Okay, with that same raw umber, I'm just going to go up a couple of the trees just to give a little bit of depth. forward a little bit. Okay, getting close to needing to finish this as we have a time limit which I only found out yesterday. So let's get rid of that a little bit. A little bit of this happening in here. Just add a bit of interest. Um, we could do with a bit more, less detail. So I could get in my colours, but I'm running out of time. So we'll just get a little bit of the purple with the white and maybe bring in a little, a few little areas where it's a bit more solid. Where you put the colour, make sure you put it in a few other places just to balance that colour out. Now, if we... We can crop bits. It's quite busy, but you can crop bits and find nice little bits of this. If I had my window, I'd show you, but I don't have my window with me. Anyway, a great uh, little exercise that you can chop up and um, use a number of the pieces or use it as a whole, put it in a white mat, it looks fantastic. Okay, thanks for joining me and um, keep an eye out for my next video which 